So here we are at the final stage of Balti Series 5 and we are very much becoming one with the internet at this point. We've covered how to stream as an avatar and in this fifth series we've gone into kind of the technical ins and outs of uh, how to set up your own virtual broadcast studio. So if you've gone through all these videos so far you'll probably be good to go on setting up your own studio but I thought I'd just show you the whole process start to finish in this final video as a nice single rounded off bit. If you want to just check out this video and sort of get a of how I might set this stuff up then this one's pretty good and then if you want to learn the technical ins and outs of how I'm building the pieces that I'm putting together here then you can check the other Balti videos so let's get into it I'll show you back to back how I started from nothing and built my own virtual broadcast studio ready to be streaming out of Unreal Engine using the off-world live streaming toolkit so let's get into it so I started by making the setting lifting some bits I'd already used uh, these scaffolds these little pillars in the middle just little cylinders and a screen. I then thought I'd make base floor texture using the off-world live kind of vibes, making a kind of slippery stone kind of floor with this off-world indented logo to it. I then sort of looked at some inspiration for I'd grab these kind of virtual production studio spaces. I just thought they looked really nice, kind of dark, and then some big widespread lighting going on. So yeah, I did that. Then in Unreal, kind of putting the materials together, tweaking those, fiddling with those. I then built out the studio to get a bit bigger, I wanted it a bit bigger, and position some screens, playing around with composition, flicking back to references occasionally, check what I was doing. I sort of brought it down again because uh, I made it too big. And then it jumped in Blender and made some sort of techie wall pieces. I thought I'd just like duplicate out a load of quite simple geometry that I could use for a wall piece. Nothing too high poly, but it would look nice and complex. So it looks like there's lots of like techie stuff going on. So yeah, just a few tubes, a few wall pieces. And then exported that out as a single piece that I could duplicate about my level with a couple different colours to it. Uh, I then sort of deleted all the lighting from my level so I could control that. Just one directional light in there I think. Then I loaded in the ceilings and the walls. This is quite fun. You can sort of start to see it build out a bit and meddled with some texture for the side bits. I ended up using this paper texture actually, sort of combining it with some multiply nodes, creating a normal map to just give it a little bit of bump, a little bit of bumpiness. The studio's really building out now visuals wise. I then thought I'd make these big diffused lights, just a big object with an emissive material on it. I, I wasn't, wasn't particularly planning to actually use this as the light, it was just sort of an aesthetic. It's an aesthetic choice really, but you could totally like make this light, turn this emissive into a static light if you wanted, then build the studio out a bit more, adding a few more bits. Next I thought it was time to migrate some assets from other sources. I grabbed like my chair and desk set up from another project, grabbed my little dancing man, also grabbed some blueprints like my camera control and my curved LED wall that was already UV mapped to 1920x1080 so that any 1920x1080 image I put in it, it's going to fit the wall perfectly. I then sort of made my light sources using some spotlights. I then thought I'd use uh, rectangle lights instead of spotlights to make the size of these. Then we call them big diffuse light areas. I guess they are rectangle lights, aren't they? Just real ones. So I put a couple of those in to light it up a bit. This stage I thought was looking really awesome. Nice contrast to it. Looks like a real kind of studio setting. And then chucked my little dancing guy in it. Uh, got his animation working. Positioned all that. And then chucking my flashy light blueprint in there. Uh, we now got a little rave going on. Next blueprint to chuck in was the Master Owl camera. It's going to be my player one. Nice camera with some point rotation to it. My Master Owl blueprint is just made up of the off world Live camera, which I chucked in. You could do it with Add Component and type in off world Live. Add a capture to a Cinecam. That Cinecam is then on a spring arm, and the length is something that changes on the mouse input of the scroll wheel, so I can so I can scroll to zoom in and out using that spring arm length. And my Master Owl has also got this mouse X and Y rotation, so it means it, uh, so that pawn has this rotation control. This off-world live capture device is going out to uh, it's going out to a texture target. That texture target is called Battle Stream One, and that's going out to my OBS. Made sure I set that uh, BP Master Owl as the initial controller that you take on. 
do that in the world settings by making your new game mode, game mode override, broadcast studio, default pawn class, master L. Uh, I then exported my blueprint FE, which is my character, my avatar, exported that from my other level, just using asset actions migrate again, and then like positioned her into the right place, looking pretty cool, pretty creepy here, I quite like that look, so checking all my live link, checking all that's working, uh, I'm just piloting my cameras and popping them down so that I can get my different camera position looking cool, so yeah here's where I copied all my camera actors in, doing a bit of blueprints. Uh, setting the camera, the button pushes to activate the different cameras by uh, using attach actor to actor using the one off world life cine cam and then attaching that to the other cameras that I've put down and here's how it's looking pretty gnarly try the barrel and get pitted so up next was a bit of play testing testing out the camera changes on button pushes it all seemed to be working. Just tweaking the positions back and forth. Bit of play testing, tweaking the position. I'm just changing my focal length of my camera to get a bit more of the field of view in. So it just kind of makes it look bigger, makes you able to see more. So here's how it's looking. It's where I started getting some texture targets in to go onto my walls. So I dragged in a little video into my OBS and then which you can see in the top corner and then that video is looping and just going out as a texture target into OBS, creating material from that. So yeah, here's where I'm sort of putting the material onto the walls. Let's see it kind of come into life now, looking cool. Then going into the material, adding a little bit of an emissive boost onto that to make the screens a bit brighter. There we go, chucking my Bouty intro into it really brings it together. You can see that nice 1920 by 1080 stretch across the curved screen. And yeah, it's really coming together now. Very nearly there. I've just got a flashing light there to emulate the kind of screen glare flicker. Uh, that's me just changing the flicker a bit, making it a bit subtler. But okay, yeah, then I noticed the floor tile was a bit funny. Uh, it was creating a bit of noise, wasn't the best. So I just kind of meddled with that normal map for a bit. It's always like the first thing you make causes problems towards the end. So I went back and changed that floor texture. Did this quite a lot <laughs> to get it right. And there you can see I'm losing frame bad now. I think I had to restart my computer and just, you know, I was just looking for things I could do to optimize at this stage. I don't see me running all these textures out and back and forth as well. Yeah, I'm just doing a bit of cleaning up, tweaking the camera angles, um, cleaning up some of my blueprints a bit. Here's uh, playing with the first person character, third person character, sorry. Yeah, always fun to run around your level <laughs> that you just made, even if it's just a room. Oh yeah, did have a go chucking this uh, flying helmet thing in there as well, but uh, oh yeah, it just ran along the floor at first, which was quite funny. I guess you could use it as a race car camera, something like that. It was quite, quite interesting. And yeah, this is pretty much the stage you see now. I'm oh, just setting up this alpha setting so that I could use the show only list and then stream, you know, alpha out on top of other backgrounds. And also just playing with some bloom and camera effects. The thing is that the gamma is quite a good setting to fiddle with so that it comes through. Um, if it's coming through into OBS a bit darker, you might need to adjust the gamma of the camera and yeah here's that here's that gamma setting so you can see that see that's a good way to up the up the brightness a bit if you're if you're losing that on the stream 1.2 seems pretty good for me and here we have it with one final light build here's my studio yay super sick super nice um change the camera angles go into frog mode if i want um yeah one final light build and i just like this a little bit darker a little bit tricky to not get any of the lights to overlap you have more than three lights overlapping it doesn't like it um but yeah this is how i would do it is how i'd have my studio i'd probably go in here type in master owl find that go into my owl capture make sure that uh show only is checked then in obs get that spout up i've got my little little gap uh, let's get out of frog mode, go in here, find my camera angle, something mean like this. Oh, my live link isn't working. Hang on, I'll just sort that out quickly. There we go. Yeah, a bit of a reboot, let's get that live link going. What camera angle do we want? F1, go here, show only, each show only list. Nicely alphaed now. Uh, let's go here. Yeah, let's go here. Um, and then F11 to full screen, then I will. Press 6 for frog mode. Oh, why am I? I've selected Master L. Get out of that. Yep, F11. 
six for frog mode. Um, yeah, and there it is. It's my studio, um, as made in just a couple sessions. You could do this in one day, I reckon. All in all, it probably took me three hours for the building, three hours for the functionality. There's a load more we could do with this, but I'm just gonna chuck this on the downloads part of the off -world Live website. I'm gonna chuck this on, and you can take this, do with it what you will, steal the functionality, uh, use it as a template for your own creations, and yeah, I hope this makes the thought of making your own virtual broadcast studio uh, a little bit easier, and you can make some beautiful, fun things pretty quick. So yeah, that's that's how I made my virtual studio space. I'd love to hear what what do you want me to do next? What do you want me to do next? Should I do more functionality? I think this needs some like this needs to be a full packaged game, I think. You know, this needs needs some intros, it needs some menus, uh, it needs more more functionality with the cameras and stuff. That's definitely something I'd like to see. Uh, but yeah, what do you want me to learn? Let me know what I should be integrating and what you wanna what you wanna now do in your streams and we can get it going. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this bounty series and I hope this can get you up and running with your own virtual studio spaces in the beautiful Unreal Engine and obviously using the Off-World live, live streaming toolkit. Be sure to check out our download center on the Off-World website. I'll link that below, but we're gonna chuck a load of blueprints, assets, and project files in there for you to use as you wish. I'm gonna put this whole project file in here for free download that you can use. So with that, that closes another little series of how to become one with the internet. And I think we are pretty close to becoming internet beings. So goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.